Welcome back everyone. These days, uh, amidst the economic conversations, the biggest worry the people have is what's going to happen to electricity prices? Is it going to go up again? Can we afford it? You switch on the television hoping to learn something new. Well, you get this new drama being screened on everyday news. ජනක රත්නායක කියන පුද්ගලයා පහුගිය කාලේ පුරාවටම සිදු කරලා තියෙන්නේ ඔහුගේ පෞද්ගලික මත මිසක් කොමිසමේ මත නොවෙන කියන එක තමයි අපිට අවබෝධ වෙලා තියෙන්නේ. ස්වාධීන කොමිෂන් සභාවේ තියෙන්නේ දේශපාලන අධිකාරියේ තීරණ ක්‍රියාත්මක නැංගීමට නෙවෙයි ඒ වගේ ස්වාධීන වැඩ කිරීමට. කැබිනට් මණ්ඩලය වෙත එවන ලද ලිපිය කොමිෂන් සභාව බවට හංගවමින් සභාපතිවරයා යවපු එක නීති විරෝධී සහ මහජන උපකිතා කොමිසමේ තියෙන පනත උල්ලංඝනය කිරීමක් කියන එක සමාජිකයන් දන්නලා තියෙනවා. අනෙක සමාජිකයන් දේශ ेखर <laughs> because uh, they need to find the money to pay for thermal power generation and currently the CEB is deprived of borrowing money as banks are stating that their debt is unsustainable since they need to showcase to the banks that there is a proper income source that would bridge the loss that's why the government is asking for the tariff hike uh, if you take the month of october in any year month of october or november in any year is it's when the CEB operates at a operating profit but if you take 2022 these are actual figures to uh, 2022 january to up to september up to october we made losses january 8408 billion loss february 10 billion loss march 14 billion april 14 billion may 9 billion june 14 billion july 28 billion august 9 billion uh, september 7 billion October we made a profit of 2.8 billion but again November 4.3 billion loss and December 28 billion loss so the loss for 2022 is close to about 150 billion rupees but the PUCSL has a different take on this they say that the tariff hike is not necessary at the moment because the money is already there as we think at the commission at this moment we don't think that we need any tariff revision because with the given tariff revision in august cb is making operational profits it feels like this isn't it back and forth is how we go from 6 to 12 and back again back and forth to stay within and repeat after me back and forth back and forth 6 to 12 Kanchana says this, then Janaka says that. Kanchana says this again, Janaka says that again. Round and round goes the idiot wheel while you and I get frustrated by the minute. Well, our cameras once again roamed around the streets of Colombo and this is what some of you had to say. At the moment, the CEB they are non-performing entities. If they can open up a platform where solar power is allowed, general public can do it, and they start purchasing as a private organisation, that would sort out most of the problems here. I feel personally that the problems inside the government and the fighting between the CEB is stopping them from opening out the regulations so that people can start investing. You know, you can start buying solar, subsidised rates. You see, every other country doing it other than Sri Lanka. So hopefully that will change. Uh, as an ordinary person, what I feel is increasing power. I mean, the price is not. necessary the yeah, advanced level examinations is going on and they are just cutting the current and they are not even kind enough to provide the needed electricity that they want and um, and of course the educated people are not ready to get into politics be, uh, because they know it's a nasty place they know what's going on they know what we are feeling but still they are not taking any steps and uh, I don't think so it's going to change in a even the current bills is going to be like doubled now it's like too much increase right yeah so it's terrible i think i don't think it's like better to live in this country anymore it is affecting so much for the people uh, for the children who are getting education right now uh, for the o levels a levels and all if the government can assist people to get um, solar power i think that will help both parties 
Well, those were your views, and uh, we all can understand the frustration. These two agencies really need to get their act together. Now, in order to understand uh, f further on this tariff hike, uh, let's go to Danidu Tanamasan, standing by Abhi Dinwood. Uh, Danidu, good to see you once again. Um, welcome uh, to uh, the program. Uh, I think we did, uh, I think it's about two weeks back, we did a similar segment uh, trying to understand how the new tariff uh, hike proposed by the uh, Ceylon Electricity Board and the Minister of Power and Energy when it comes to come into effect or if it comes into effect, uh, what would happen and who may have to pay what amount of money. Uh, now, I also understand that you've been uh, thinking, uh, looking into this proposal and try to figure out uh, what are the hidden agendas of this proposal or are there any hidden ones or, or you know, there is a lot of narratives. Uh, the truth never comes out. It always comes out once it has been implemented and then people try to figure out, oh my God, we've been duped once again or something of that nature. So what exactly uh, have you learned uh, um, when you look into these proposals uh, on the new tariff hike? Yes, Mahesh, this is, a, I think, a very interesting question that a lot of people are being affected by. Just to give a quick recap of what we did a few weeks back, it was we focused on the majority of people using the, the amount of kilowatt hours that have been used, the number of units, basically, being used by a majority of people. That was about 1.5 million people that we focused on. That was between 0 and 30 kilowatt hours. And we focused on the price and the amount that they will have to pay the increase in tariffs. What I'm going to do today is just to focus on something that the minister was mentioning within the Gatriel program, actually, where the minister tried to explain the amount of people that are actually paying a higher amount to the rate. And to do that, we really need to focus on where these numbers are, who are these people and where these numbers are. To give a proper breakdown of that, Mahesh, what I'll do is I'll take you through the numbers that are attached to the Ceylon Electricity Board, the number of households, basically known as customers in this instance, and I'll give you a breakdown of where these areas actually exist. Now, the majority, 6 billion, which is, which is what the minister focused on also, uh, is within the domestic sector, which is the daily usage, which is where what we see around the country. We see five other sections where there are subsidies that have been given, where are different rates for the number of kilowatt hours that have been used. We see religious institutions in that sector, that is about over 43,000. We, we see industrial sector, that is about over 60, 68,000. We see general, the general category include things like banks, things like hospitals, warehouses, and so on, uh, which includes over 800,000. Government facilities, government institutions, which is over 9,000, and hotels, which is over 559. Now, the key thing I want to explain within this segment, Mahesh, is if we take within the domestic section, for the pr present amount of tariffs. Now, this is the argument that the minister was making, that there, were, there is, a, he, the number he mentioned was over 300,000, but the number that we see is ov just over 200,000. There are a number of people, just over 200,000, paying 75 rupees per kilowatt hour. Now, this is the highest that is paid amongst all the categories, amongst all the categories that I was, being, uh, I was explaining. So, who are the people that are paying 75 per unit? That is the number of people that are the, the, the individuals that fall the above 181 kilowatt hours. Now, you see a number 250 here, which is basically to say it has been broken down into four sections. The, the, the price will be determined based, the, the maximum price will be determined on people uh, spending for 250, for 500, for 750, and for 100 kilowatt hours. Now, that is how the uh, breakdown is done. The energy charge is 75, as I mentioned. Now, this is the highest that is being paid as of now. And the monthly charge, would, there's a fixed monthly charge of 1,500. The proposed amount is for, to give 2,000. Now, as the minister focuses on this, he mentions that we should not have one section of people having 75 rupees that is being given per kilowatt hour. And the argument he makes after that is mentioning, now, this, Mahesh, as you can clearly see, is not the lower income level. This is the higher income level. These are the people that use a lot of electricity, basically. So the argument he made was, now, they will move into a rooftop, so, uh, rooftop solar. Now, that is the kind of sustainable energy that that movement will happen. And then he went on to say that the CEB will lose those customers. Now, you and I can have a debate about this, whether that's a good or a bad thing. It, it looks like as if, you know, if they're moving into solar energy and if they are the highest uh, number of, uh, um, you know, consumers who pay that highest rate, uh, moving into uh, solar energy because of this power tariff hike uh, uh, is not exactly a bad thing if we look uh, at the country's energy dependency. Exactly. Now, I mean, I mean, that's exactly the point. Uh, and I think that is the sort of argument that you were also bringing out within that program, because we are not sure about why there is a lackluster approach there. Because we have seen this with the Ceylon Electricity Board, mind you. We have seen this for a long period of time. But we have a question about where the minister lies on this. So what we see is that if there is a push 
made through the tariffs to move into solar energy i think that is very much a good thing but we um, have we can't be myopic in that scenario mahesh and mention okay we'll just have these 200000 customers move into solar we need a more a bigger transition basically so to, in order to do that what exactly is the tariff structure is a question that has to be posed. yeah then uh, understood uh, i mean uh, solar energy renewable energy is the way forward for a country like sri lanka because we've seen like last year what happened uh even right now we can't uh, basically uh, be depending on oil in order to uh, keep our power structures running we really need to move into something that is sustainable and that, i mean solar yes it is expensive at this moment this is where the government has to be talking about and actually taking steps to make sure that people have these types of facilities to take in uh, you know buy uh, solar units I think it's very expensive at this moment but uh, that is where the government should be thinking because sustainable energy is something that a country like Sri Lanka can uh, have and on top of it have the energy dependency. Uh Danidu Tanwasam thank you very much I uh, really appreciate Danidu Tanwasam and the data board. Let's uh, talk about solutions for this crisis and for that joining me now is the former chairman of the Strategic Enterprise Management Agency Ashoka Begunwardana. Uh, sir appreciate your time uh, thank you very much um, for speaking to us. Now the minister just like uh, we just showed earlier on proposes a 60% hike in the beginning of this year but the PUCSL chairman says can't do it. What is the middle ground? Because we need to pay what it costs that is understandable but we can't pay the cost for the losses made about 10 15 years ago so what is the middle ground that is fair for both parties the answer is simple uh, mahesh now uh, there are three parties involved the government that's the ministry the service provider that's the ceylon electricity board and the regulator that's the uh, public utilities commission so if if each and every party uh, look into concentrate on its role and responsibilities then we can find a solution now what's happening is uh, we are discussing about the consumer tariff uh, which should be cost reflective meaning that the ceb should not uh, uh, running at a loss so that's true so uh, from the point of view of the consumers the government should make sure that the uh, as you mentioned the costs are uh, reasonable and the from whom we should uh, charge that should be transparent so to up, up to that extent the C, the government will be setting the policies and the service provider puc uh, the ceylon electricity board uh, should ensure that they are um, generating the uh, required power at the lowest cost and selling at a fair price and the regulator's role is to ensure that the ceb uh, the process at the ceb is transparent and it's it's with the within line within the line of the government policy so that's the uh, uh, purpose now what's happening right now is the uh, if if uh, we can understand that the ministry is going beyond their territory and trying to intervene and introduce tariff it's not the uh, uh, ministry's role it's the role of the regulator in consultation with the public uh, the uh, ceylon electricity board so to that extent uh, now the solution is there we need to recheck the uh, submissions made by the ceb and the response of the public utilities commission and to be transparent it it should be uh, uh, it should be make uh, uh, aware that the public is know about uh, no, uh, public know about that and uh, the solution ultimate solution will give the answer to the, all these questions understood uh, well uh, the minister of power and energy kanchan vijay sekar was one of, uh, was on one of my other programs recently and uh, he said that out of the 6 million users about over uh, 300000 uh, households are the ones who uh, bears the highest amount of cost for a unit we just um, did a, a segment on that as well now uh, the rest get subsidized rates uh, due to the categories that they are in be it industrial religious or other is this a sustainable way of proceeding because only a few pay high and a majority pay a very low price well uh, to understand the the real situation we need to understand how the consumers consume now if all this uh, all this uh, uh, power generated is at the rate, same cost then the average is the fair uh, benchmark you can say that about that is uh, 
paying more and below that is paying less. But the real situation is uh, now 95% of the consumers consume less amount of energy. Whereas the 5% you mentioned and it's about 50% of the total consumption in the domestic sector is consumed by only by 20% of the uh, customers. So uh, when you look back now the, from the point of view of power generation the cost is not the same. Uh, we start with hydro which is 2, two rupees 80 cents a unit. Uh, then we go to the coal which is 48 rupees per unit and when you go to the uh, oil fired power generation it's 88 rupees. So uh, to cater to the demand what CEB is doing is first they try to uh, provide, cater to the requirement with hydro then if, if it's not adequate then with coal and then go to uh, expensive power plants of oil fired power plant. So the average cost increases because of this high end consumers. They consume more because of that reason we have to generate more energy because of that reason uh, we have to go for oil fired power plants. So average does not reflect the true, true condition. So 80% I must say 80% of the consumers paying more for to cater to the demand of the balance 20%. So exactly the opposite of what minister has said. Minister is saying that uh, they are subsidized in the poor or the uh, low end consumers whereas the actual situation is low end consumers are subsidized in the high end consumers. They are paying less because of the marginalized cost is higher to cater to their increasing demand. Absolutely. Um, well, what are the alternative solutions we can actually look into for this current issue? Uh, the actual situation in a crisis like this in the power sector the first thing we have to concentrate is how to conserve energy, use, uh, use efficiently and uh, reduce the consumption as much as possible. So that practice was there right throughout the his, uh, history. But nowadays we cannot see that the present government is encouraging the people to uh, uh, consume less, uh, conserve so that we can meet, uh, we can cater to this crisis situation. So that's number one which is not happening. So the second point is if they are not doing that then we need to go for power cuts that will lead to another uh, issue because of that will be that will have a huge impact on the economy. So uh, uh, the, the third one is the tariff. The tariff issue we have to make sure that we shouldn't compromise the basic needs of the people. We need to concentrate on the high end, those who are consuming more, for them to go for other alternatives or uh, to, uh, to give up their luxury requirement and uh, go through this uh, crisis period. So for, for that purpose, what they have to do is, we have to charge from the high end, which is happening is the exactly opposite. Now, when we compare the prices in July, the proposed one will increase the price of the low end consumers by 12 times, 12 times, whereas the high end consumers, it's only doubled. So what exactly we have to do, it's exactly the opposite. What we can do is, well, we can, uh, we can increase the uh, tariff of the high end consumers by four, four times, then we can uh, bridge this gap of uh, consumption and uh, the generation cost and the uh, revenue. So in order to bridge this gap, you shouldn't touch the low end consumers who are utilizing energy for their basic needs and you should charge from the high end consumers. You can, uh, you can increase their uh, uh, tariff by four times, you can get the same result. Indeed. Um, thank you very much. We had to leave it at that. Uh, that was the former chairman of the Strategic Enterprise Management Agency, Ashok Abekundra. Abekundra, apologies, uh, speaking to us. Let's take a short commercial break. This is State of the Nation, back in a moment.